Buenas tardes. Good afternoon to you all and welcome to this second panel of the course on cultural policies in Europe in the face of integration challenges. The second panel we have uh, entitled it uh, United Diversity from Theory to Practice, a Cultural Policy for Europe. We have three excellent panelists, experts in the field, who are going to speak from the practitioner's point of view, perhaps less academic, but from the experience in the programs and projects where they have been working in this area and where they are still working. We're going to organize it in a format as a panel and round table. We will have three brief interventions of 20 minutes so that later we can have uh, uh, questions and a debate um, among them. And if we have a little time, we may have a question for the three of them. You have uh, the curriculum, so I will simply introduce Augusto Paramio Nieto. He's coordinator of the subprogram Culture Europe, Creative Europe in the uh, Ministry of Education, Culture and Sport of the Government of Spain. He has the program Europe with the citizens and is in the focal point. That the Agency of uh, Education and Culture has in Spain in order to convey the uh, functioning of U Creative Europe and Europe with citizens from the EU to stimulate. Uh, 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 Spanish institutions to participate in it. Augusto, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Noblesse oblige, I have to thank first, not just because of protocol, but I'm convinced my um, my relationship with uh, this foundation is very deep and for long. Also, thank you to the University of Extremadura. What I'm going to be talking about today I'm going to be informal since I have been a university teacher and my first job was here in Extremadura as well. I'm going to be using the informal uh, use of talking to my audience. So first of all, thanks to the institution, thanks to you all for coming here at a time of this, at a time like this, and in a setting, an occasion like this one. So I would like to highlight my thanks to you all because temptation is uh, great, and being here is something to uh, admire. And I think that is something that we share uh, with the panelists. So what am I supposed to talk about? Well, I have an obligation because we have a mandate. We do not have a double game. Uh, this morning there have been some passionate uh, opinions from the academic world, uh, almost the political world, and as an individual I do have some opinions, personal opinions, but I cannot express them. My mandate and my contract that I signed with the European Commission gives us, and I'm going to talk in plural because I'm not the only one, gives us certain uh, guidelines that we need to follow. And they are very prosaic, the guidelines. Fortunately, because this morning I was a bit scared uh, because of the opinion of the panelists, but then I have seen your curriculum that you come from the cultural management uh, world, so I think it's going to be interesting what I talk about. I'm playing at home. Uh, all of the ideas that you have have been mentioned this morning and will be mentioned. But the ideas that you may have need a prosaic element, a not very nice one um, that has been highlighted this morning which is funding, money, investment. We are at a university setting, and this morning it has already been mentioned, the Erasmus topic. So it's a bit the same, but in the field, not of education, but rather in the field that I 
um, working. Two uh, lines of funding, two European programs that are managed from an office that is under the umbrella of the Secretary of State of Culture. Before we used to be a ministry, and now we are Secretary of State. I am interested in telling you some information that may not be very useful to you as, as such, because you may be interested in how to achieve uh, that funding. But it is interesting because we have a reputation uh, in our programs of uh, having a lot of uh, red tape and a bit boring even, if um, I'm allowed to speak colloquially. So that is our first fight and we need to untangle uh, this because it's not difficult, it's not that difficult to um, ask for this funding. And I am certain that most of you are used to dealing with even more complicated and difficult um, project. But the idea that comes from long is that European programs are very difficult uh, to manage. I do not want to tell you just the theory here, what are the requirements, what are the conditions, but rather I want to tell you that we uh, are a project, a program to, as Miguel Ángel said, we are the national uh, points of information for Interreg, for Erasmus, for citizenship and for culture in our uh, side. We are co-funded. Co we are subsidiary uh, culture because we receive money from Brussels in order to fulfill a certain role, which is uh, the mandate that we have signed with the European Commission that m m mandates us to um, disseminate the information uh, for the possible applicants that are just you as an um, audience. In order to do that, we fill many forms. We carry out a work plan. Uh, we get the green light sanctioned by the European Commission and once it is executed we have a calendar that has to be respected at times but there are many um, times where there is flexibility and then we need to justify our project. That is, um, even though yesterday we were invited to dinner but if yesterday I spent uh, I would have spent something on metro bus whatever I would have to present my ticket submit them and then we will be submitted to an audit from London uh, where we are audited in general so I hope that you follow a process like this because my wish is that you uh, submit projects to the programs that we uh, manage you will have to do the same thing. You need to um, fill forms, and they're the same forms that we fulfill. But I, but you need uh, to um, be selected. You need to be approved. And in our case, we always have um, prog projects approved. We can suffer some cuts if expectations are not met. Uh, we are paid in two times, but our projects are always approved. But we know how to fill these forms, not just in theory, but also in uh, practical terms, because we need to do the same as you would have to do in the future. So after this distance between you and me is blurred, what are this uh, national point of information? Well, it's very easy. The uh, EU Commission, which is like a regional government, uh, we talk at three levels, uh, local, regional, um, local, regional, uh, national, European level. Either if the project is for Wales, for Normandy, for Extremadura, it has to go through uh, different institutions, uh, the regional departments, to fund uh, the uh, regional approach project. Then if it's a national uh, um, program, then it depends on the Ministry of Culture, their national projects. And the projects that are submitted to us they have to be cross-national. From the moment that you belong to the European institutions, we stop using the I and you 
but rather we use the us and you in plural because a singular uh, project is not funded by our European project and that's the first rule. But what are these offices? Well, they're a line of help by uh, the European Commission for the different fields, audiovisual, uh, economy, culture, etc. And member states uh, suggest are suggested uh, to locate the office wherever they want. Usually, um, in Spain, they do it uh, with a ministry, with um, with um, workers from the government, but. In uh, France, they are like an NGO. Once this is decided, an agreement is signed with the EU Commission, and we all have a mandate, which is to promote and disseminate and help those who wish and are interested to on participating to these EU in, uh, initiatives. We do it one way or another, but we need to be accountable uh, in the same way. So we carry out some statistical studies. And this is the first idea that I wanted to transmit and set on the table, which is the difficulty in harmonizing um, with this, the, what has been talked about this morning. For us, we cannot change uh, our culture program. It cannot be changed. There is a PowerPoint that is going to be um, uploaded, and you will understand it. We have no time to go into it now, but as a national um, desk for information, what we want to do is to give you some information, uh, which is uh, the different requirements. For instance, a project with uh, two countries, 600,000 euros at big scale, small scale, etc. So we want to give you our empirical experience so that it is easier for you to submit this project. Uh, in this land of conquerors and adventurers, um, I want to say that this submitting a project is an adventure and it changes you as a person too. And that's what is so exciting because uh, a museum curator, for instance, at the Museum of Merida, has nothing to do or something to do with the Roman Museum at the north of Naples. And that's the contrast that is uh, trying to be achieved. Once you get financing, things are even much better. But it's not the point. Uh, what is a challenge about um, European project is uh, the road towards achieving it. Of course, if you receive the money and the funding, even better. But on the way, you manage to lose your fear to filling forms. But why should you be afraid? I'm sure that you're uh, used to filling forms all the time. You've probably filled a thousand forms similar to this. And even better, uh, you are creating a link. You have partnership with European Union. And maybe projects are not chosen. Um, but at least you have a link and you know who to work with, who never to work with. And maybe you get experience at a bilateral level or a multilateral level. So we're trying to make friends. And making friends is always something uh, pleasurable. And experiences of future are always there for you to grab. So we need to carry out this task, and that is why we sign this contract and this uh, mandate. So after having to hat, which is something that has been discussed this morning, I have to say that I have two hats too, which is first one, the culture program, uh, which is uh, under the umbrella of uh, creative, creative Europe which is uh, to do with media and audiovisual and culture in general. Many films are financed by this uh, creative Europe. And so our work is uh, focused on creative Europe in the culture side of this. And then I, have, I am wearing a different hat, 
which is the citizenship uh, project, Europe for Citizens. It has nothing to do with culture. It's launched by the European Union, then the representatives um, from uh, Spain, from the ministry, go to Europe, and there uh, Spain says, well, we want this Europe for citizens. And then it's suggested to us. We had a long uh, trajectory. We knew how to work in Europe. So it was even better for us to have these two projects, the Creative Europe and Europe for Citizens, which has to do with NGOs, with uh, uh, municipalities, the civil society organization, think tanks. Probably we have a lot more to do with the audiovisual uh, world than uh, the uh, culture uh, one. And so we usually discuss both projects. The possibilities of finding EU funding are multiple. Uh, having seen your profile, you're probably more linked to culture, but do never leave alone other possibilities because an art gallery or a library, just because of the nature of your organization, do not reject other uh, possibilities for funding. Municipalities usually have uh, twinning program, programs, excuse me, uh, but municipalities may have some other youth groups. And there is a Grundig uh, Euro, uh, European program. But then in municipalities, there are other groups of women, for instance, that do audiovisual programs. And there is a project as well at European level. And many of these projects, they're all very similar. And once you fill one form, you can fill 1,000. They're all very similar. Of course, you have to highlight either if you're going on the cultural Europe, you need to put your focus on culture. If it's Europe for citizenship, then you have to focus on citizens, of course. And uh, some uh, people want to focus on students. Well, then you focus on Erasmus, for instance, or a film producing uh, company like the one here. Uh, usually they deal with audiovisual programs, but maybe they're also interested in the realistic cinema in Southeast Europe. Then they focus on culture. We deal with that. So you need to know how and where to focus your initiative to tailor uh, your program to the European project as well, but do not reject other funding opportunities. The best example could be a historical palaces, historical houses. It has to do with culture, but at a certain point in time, they want to go beyond historians, culture, uh, curator, professors to do uh, guided tours. What they want at a certain point of time is research and development, R&D, or how to uh, create sensors so that they know when visitors are stopping in front of a certain painting. Well, then we're dealing with a Horizon 2020, for instance, which is a framework program that Christina has already discussed. We have the uh, challenge number six, that focuses in humanity and culture topics. Uh, we um, cover our, our um, field of work, and then we pass that on to the Horizon 2020 to do the same. So that was just something that I wanted to uh, make you think about. You have European perspectives. There are certain requirements. It's European money, so of course, uh, there are certain rules of game that need to be respected. And once you have identified your uh, tool, who you can work with, then you can work with different EU programs. For instance, EU Live, Culture, and Creative Europe. We carry out the whole follow-up. Maybe if you know nothing about um, the requirements, then we can help you. Some people um, submit projects and they do know how it works, so we need to tailor as well the information uh, depending on uh, what type of information you do have yourselves. 
Uh, for instance, we have uh, different uh, lines of work like um, for culture and citizenship. My personal opinion is that uh, with regard to culture is the following. is based on uh, movement, mobility, dialogue. In the cultural programs, we have a seven-year programs from 2014 or 13 to 2020. We're on the uh, 2014 to 2020. And I believe that culture uh, drives uh, economy as well. So we want a good business plan. We want um, impact indicators. We want the project to be innovative and go beyond what has been done up until now. And all of these cross-cutting uh, approaches and projects require very specific information that up, up until now I do not have. So we cooperate with many other projects with regard to innovation. Last year we had information um, that was uh, carried out by uh, 2020 Horizon. So we told them that we do not want to uh, carry out projects that have to do with the environment, but rather with culture, which is what we deal with. So we sign an agreement and Horizon 2020 explain our students and our applicants how their projects have to be innovative. I'm about to finish. We don't speak about politics. We are a financial instrument and we promote these programs that can fund the ideas that have been presented here, the Budapest Observatory, the Academy of Euste, the Association of Maria Rosa, and so on and so forth. They are all potential beneficiaries and they have projects that have to be articulated and uh, put in black and white. And this is what we help to do, the topic of why the program is like this and not like that. And there is where we stimulate you to do that. And this is the niche that I have uh, thought I should present while listening to others. These are programs that come from the Commission. If the 2000 uh, culture program is different from the 2016 program is because they have aerials and, and, and radars and so they they change their their uh, points and they have to transmit the position of the country and they are articulated through those uh, management committees I spoke about the commission uh, contacts the uh, countries uh, there is a management com com committee and they say I don't want the program culture uh, to include publishing houses because they don't fit there. So the collective or the group of um, digital people do so does some lobbying and then it reaches the respective instances so that the next year or in the next program uh, that will be taken into account. So we can help you to do that. The information points are a good aerial in order to um, see how the situation is in the area of culture and citizenship. And there you can address your uh, claims and your interests so that all the projects can finally perhaps incorporate your uh, interests, your curiosities, etc. I, I've been quite respectful with time, which has been a real pity, but I prefer to finish here. And if there are any questions, we, we will reply. And I'm finishing right now. I don't want to be a demagogue. What the projects that depend on the executive agency are selected by a, an expert committee. The, focal points of information, we will, we will take you there if you ask for it until you push the presentation and submission of your application and that 
reaches Brussels. And we have no responsibility, whatever, not even in a pre uh, pre preparatory project or preparatory process. This is taken uh, care of in Brussels. Bueno, muchas, muchas gracias, Augusto. Thank you, Augusto. As you have seen, the presentation made by Augusto is quite uh, pragmatic, quite down to earth. But I think uh, that it was very important that you could see him, that you can have a direct contact with him, because they carry out a task which is very important. The link between us, the civil society, citizens, organizations that work in the cultural sector, and the European Union. We know that the European Union has no competences on the issue of culture, and this is a battle that we have to fight uh, in the future. But it has a series of programs that try to promote cultural cooperation, and it is the key tool that the European Union has, together with others mentioned by Augusto, not only cultural, cultural programs, but also Horizon 2020 with a cultural program is perfectly valid, but they make the link uh, which allows for cultural cooperation in the European territory, uh, this kind of cooperation which is so necessary. Now we have uh, some time for questions. Many of you are working in the cultural field. If you have questions, you can talk to Augusto. Although, in order to break the ice, I will start with a question. You are used to have, uh, like feelers, where you can measure the doubts and the uh, also the ideas that uh, they want to present. How do you convey those ideas which may at times seem impossible so the European Commission takes them into account in order to incorporate those programs and policies? Is there that kind of channeling mechanism through you as uh, direct uh, interlocutors with the Commission so that the European institutions may have the preoccupations of citizens in, in, or take them into account. We are in a privileged uh, uh, situation. We have the management committee in the next door to us and they tell us we have to go to Brussels. What, what do you want us to say? And we tell them, say this and this and that. That's our channel. In the previous period, the representative of the uh, management committee was usually or could be the same, the focal point and the committee of management. Now it is in the horizon 2020 uh, is different and they are separate now. You can get in touch with the uh, management committee. Uh, the one who's in charge now comes from Extremadura. And the one who attends the meetings in Brussels, we invite them to our um, information meetings. So he will know what we would like to convey because he's not going to defend an anecdotal point. He's going to defend a, a point of view which is also um, attached to other countries as well. That is the way to channel it. And then there are lobbies, which, as you know, is uh, a bit uh, controversial because we always say that it is impossible that the influence will make that an assessor will evaluate positively because the director general has run him by phone. But the lobby, in order for the document be, to, uh, in order for the document to be in this manner or the other, uh, that is something which is possible. Possible. So there are lobbies in Brussels or in The Hague or in Amsterdam, and there are 
institutions of this type everywhere, uh, from uh, clowns to artists, etc., etc. And if they are there, if you want to adhere, if you have, I don't know whether you have to pay a fee, but they are the ones who have to uh, channel this. And uh, the European Commission consults with the civil society when an announcement is going to be made. These are the two ways. But in our case, it, is, it doesn't work like this. We are civil servants, and that is the conventional thing. And you have to get in touch with the representative of the management committee, and that's it. You defend our position this way and the other, and that's it. Now you know that we are in the... 2014 to 2020, but now documents are starting for the 2020-2026, and now it's the moment to start the machinery uh, because there are things in the present and current present, a big part current program that may be changed in the future, which we will hope that uh, will materialize, of course. Questions, Augusto? Questions to Augusto? Anyone else or comments? Cristina. Cristina, two things. The EU has something which is a bit misleading. Since they don't want to have and to run any risk, apparently everybody can enter, but they sometimes demand an amount of money which many NGOs don't have that money. Yes, they they demand co-finance, co-funding. But they speak about citizens, but then in the final, in the final analysis there, there are municipalities and they normally do not recognize the legal or rather the trustworthiness of uh, enterprises. I don't know well Creative Europe but in other programs, it is clear you cannot join this. You have to be a public entity and to have a finance, uh, financial support where NGOs don't fit. So there are many frustrations. That is one question. And the other is whether Creative Europe is solving this. I suppose one or two programs have to pass in order to open the eyes in that sense. Another question is that within Creative Europe and that program, what type of lines is more frequent? Is it theatrical, uh, dissemination, heritage? What lines of projects? Uh, quick uh, reply. The, f the first one is the one you have to respond. It is uh, the European parliament members, the ones who have to respond. Once the initiative is taken, we cannot modify anything. We can perhaps uh, modify it. Co-finance is the most uh, problematic thing. First, personality. Second, because there has to be co-finance. Because ministries or uh, governments don't give uh, all the money. In Horizon 2020, yes, sometimes. But that can be, uh, in a way, circumvent. This can be circumvented. Because there are uh, delicate scenarios. But from that, aid can be from 40 and 50 percent. The most popular is three countries, small progress, uh, small projects, 60 percent finance plus the 7% of indirect uh, uh, expenses which you charge and do not uh, justify. So it is 33%, thir 3, 4, uh, or 5 countries. You can charge what is compatible with regional uh, support. Imagine, this is a foundation like the one of Eustia. Of Eustia, you need to co-finance 100,000. One can give uh, two, one can give 60, and so on. The Eustia Foundation has uh, committed 20,000. Let's suppose that the Junta de Extremadura, the government, gets that money, or the ministry, or if they have money from uh, private uh, sponsors like Repsol, all the better. But then one can uh, charge money, uh, 
with the timesheet and be careful. There are amounts that um, were limited to 20%, but now, well, everything is easy. Director General is working 100%. They don't believe that. One has to be careful with the timesheets. But that can be circumvented, as I said, and this is what would place us in vulnerability. We do not know any project that has been rejected because the uh, applying uh, entity did not have the money. If you don't have any money, ask for it would be a terrible mistake for me. But the, the question of money, the, the trick don't allow you to see the forest. What you have to present is a good idea. And after a good idea, more original um, and persuasive, we will see how the money will be tackled. Because they're not going to ask you the co-finance. Uh, for 40,000 uh, euros, uh, do we need a guarantee? Only the leader of the consortium uh, fills out a um, file of financial capacity. Uh, it is not necessary to have money. It's simply there where the money is uh, deposited, and that's it. So there are ways to really tackle things. Present a good idea. How can I justify this? Someone tells us. But if you if you, you, you don't have even the foundations of your project and, and, and you're always thinking of the, of the last point. The beginning is uh, the project, this, the partners, and so on and so forth. In case we have a, a workshop, we will obviously explain more in detail these things. This is only a first uh, touching base thing. I know cases which may be very relevant in that case. And there are no, no quotas, neither for being geographical uh, places. If the 200 best uh, programs are from Iceland and they are from, uh, for, for, for performing arts, well, they will take the 200. There are no quotas for countries or sectors. Projects from Mr. Madura, we have plenty, one of them. Hans passed the Hans in the prehistoric caves carried out by the government and another one uh, video or whatever. If the initiative is what decides the selection or the rejection is the quality of the proposal. Neither the director general or a call or whatever. If the proposal has the appeal, the assessor will say, it is not the same as the, the other 30 I have seen, and I will give good marks. The uh, assessor will take care of the uh, budgets and uh, he says the, he's going to subcontract the uh, fees of this uh, uh, um, enterprise, and it is uh, obviously over dimension. And in that case, they will make a remark on that. I could give hundreds of examples of very small institutions. Neither the Prado, the Sofia Museum, the Royal Theatre, the big institutions, never. Paradoxically, they never take uh, the big uh, institutions with uh, specific departments for institutional uh, relations, the ones that will take that. But I can give examples of a small institutions, you, your association or foundation is perfectly uh, eligible for these programs. Thank you. Thank you, Augusto, for these explanations. I know Augusto for a while, and he could uh, talk for hours, and he's going to be here uh, the following couple of days, so we'll be able to approach him personally in case we want to solve pending doubts or ideas we may have in our heads to make the most of these programs. Thank you and applause.